What's going on, BB gang? Welcome back to the channel, All Things Strange. It's your man, Dr. Strange. And it looks like we are back in action. So I'm asking, are we stacking or slacking on, looks like we got Uncanny X-Men number 130. And that's going to be the first appearance of Dazzler. And this is going to be dropping on tuesday june 20th 8 a.m pacific time you guys know the drill so we gotta dig in get some facts about the drop check out some background info on dazzler see if this is a popular character i mean we already know this is not a popular character but maybe there's some future plans for this character you know what i'm saying that might make her popular and then increase the value of this book in real life might you know help us out on the app as well so first things first i gotta check in with the vv twitter fam you know how i do it then i'm gonna hop on over to the vv blog site get the drop details then i'm gonna hop on over to key collector who knows where else get some background details on the character dazzler and then we're gonna ride out on ebay get some cgc real life real time price values on the book figure out we're gonna stack a slack on it so let's dive in, man. All right, guys, we are here. VB's Twitter. All right. Looks like we got Chris Severs here with some gold collect info. I just want to see what the people are talking about, though. So I said, make it 5K at least. Come on. Dazzle got a buff and Marvel Snap and not an FA comic releasing on VB. Yeah, somebody else loves the covers on these. We definitely got to check those out. You know what I'm saying? We got Adam and us with some Go Collect info right here. So let's check it out. So it looks like there is a 9.9, .9 graded on the census and it has not been sold. So no info there. But when it comes to a 9.8, there's 332 of them on the census, 170 sales with a fair market value of $1,600. 9.6 goes for about 350. That's a large price discrepancy for two grade points. I don't know. Something seems off there, guys. Uh, 9.4, 797 on the census. 316 sales has a fair market value of $270. And then 9.2 will get you $200. There's no telling how old this data is when this snapshot was taken. So that's why we're going to hit up eBay, see what people are looking for right now, real time. So let's dive in a little further, hit up the VB blog site and get the drop details. Figure out we're going to stack a slap on this book man. let's do it hey guys we made it We're here on vv's blog site vv.me checking out candy x-men number 130 and it says the first appearance of dash phoenix and cyclops on the hunt for a new mutant when they are attacked by a group of mandroids who are eerily familiar with their power sets plus kitty pride escapes this release features vv exclusive rare and ultra rare covers by nicoletta baldari very familiar with her work right seems to me like she's getting all of the female character work as far as our exclusive covers and i don't know how i feel about that i'd like to see her draw some male characters and i'd like to see some male artists draw some female characters so whatever <laughs> you know what i mean just my opinion on that uh our list price is 6.99 which is should be and we got five cover variants five thousand total editions first available edition for public sale is number 158 and you guys know how we do man we about to get 3,000 classic cover commons 1,225 vintage variant uncommons only 500 hero variant rares 250 vibranium variant ultra rares and only 125 true believer variant secret rares available globally Max purchase limit of five fly boxes on the drop. And BB is withholding 287 editions across all five rarities. So let's dig into the covers, see what we got. We got um, Corey giving us the breakdown. Do check that out on the blog site and on YouTube. So let's dive in here, check out. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like sick right here, man. Oh, man. 40 cent i mean pardon me y'all i'm just pausing because it's bringing back memories man like i had a couple of that i have no idea how they got my collection you know back in the days we used to do trades with books and gi joes and transformers so sometimes somebody would be like you know it's one main book you want but they'd be like oh throw in these other four you know and you just take them or whatever 
but yeah i definitely had some dazzler in the collection i did not have this uncanny x-men issue specifically i think i have one of her books you know what i mean but um yeah this cover is fire got nightcrawler got cyclops you know this is dope man what can i say man let me let me know down below what you guys think man you know we got the x-men <laughs> sign with all the disco lights you know what i'm saying like back in in at this time man disco like we're rolling off of the disco era and it was kind of fading away by the time this book came out we're gonna dive into the story a little bit but just from my perspective what i remember and um dazzler was like considered a really hot chick in the comics man because she was very down to earth and relatable there wasn't a lot of female characters that were like that like it's a whole backstory that's really interesting i'll dive in and um hit you guys off with that info in a minute but let's check out the uncommon here they're doing it right once again listening to the people you know we only got dazzler with color on this cover and i like that man i really do they didn't even highlight anything in the corner with the x-men none of that just straight dazzler great job fantastic job let's check out the rare by nicoletta baldari see how she did she has some very uh abstract art you know they put the, the label in the bottom left corner kind of like that you know it's a variant you know the x-men in the bottom corner and she's really highlighting dazzler here on this cover man we got the ultra rare see how it all came together full color and as usual you know how she do she got the superstar money colors popping so i know they're gonna love this cover shout out to those guys link to their channels in the description area of course you probably already subscribed to them though but yeah man this this definitely brings it all together i mean look at this the x-men logo was popping the label in the corners popping it matches the hair like they they did their thing you know like compared to two you know what i'm saying and her hair is orange so she didn't just make a letter didn't just grab that color out of thin air but let's check out a secret rare cover here this is obviously a panel pull from the original book here and I actually like it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what to expect from the older books, guys. We're rarely going to get any action on the Secret Rare cover, you know, uh, mainly because a lot of first appearances, there wasn't action going on, you know what I'm saying? They either literally appeared at the end of the book, like about to save the day, and you're like, who the hell is that? Or it's kind of like, you know, this, you know? Oh, not a lot of action in the book. That's all I could say as far as Dazzler, but... You know, with the X-Men overall, she definitely got busy. Next, meet Allison Blair, the Dazzler. She can transform sun into powerful bolts of light. Leave this one to the Dazzler. Uh. You guys go on. Enough. How about that death, huh? Didn't I tell you she's something? Um, yeah, let's head on over to Key Collector and get some background info on Uncanny X-Men number 130 FA Dazzler. And just some additional background info on Dazzler, guys. Uh, Dazzler appears in 2,637 issues. And she's basically a mutant with the ability to transform sound into light, which often forces her into reluctant heroism. She is also a very gifted singer and performer, hence her reservations in donning her uniform. A little bit about the creation of Dazzler creation of Dazzler was the result of a cross promotion between Marvel and a music record label called Casablanca Records. Sometime around 1980, Casablanca approached Marvel with the idea of creating a new comic hero, while at the same time in the real world, a new artist working for Casablanca would take on the same persona as the character. John Romita Jr. designed her first costume, but the remainder of Dazzler's character traits came together from the input of many people involved in the project. Uh, basically, there were conflicts between the ideas developed by Marvel and the record company arose, and Dazzler made a first appearance in Uncanny X-Men 130 before the development had finished and the cross promotion eventually collapsed with Dazzler's solo series beginning in 1981. 
Okay, guys, here we are on Key Collector Comics, checking out on Canny X Men number 130, released in February 1980. As you can see right there, this is considered a key. This book had a low of $20 and mid of $80 and a high of $225. A couple of key facts the Dark Phoenix Saga Part 2, first appearance of Dazzler, second appearance of Kitty Pride, second appearance of Emma Frost, first full appearance of Sebastian Shaw, the Black King. Jean Grey becomes the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club. So it's a lot going on in this one book, man. I like that. You know, so I'm going to head on over to eBay. Figure out, I'm going to stack a slack on first appearance of Dazzling, Uncanny X-Men number 130. Let's ride out. Check it out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here on eBay. You know how I like to do that. I'm hit the saw button. You click this right here, highest price plus shipping. I already got CGC in the search bar, so I'm trying to see what the uh, graded comics are going for. So let's see here. We got a signed one, we're gonna exclude that. We got a 9.8 going for $2,600. So let me go back and see what CGC was saying for a 9.8. They have a 9.8 here with a fair market value of 1600 one year average of 1472 so as usual the prices have gone up <laughs> uh we got another newsstand here 9.8 going for 2000 another 9.8 for 1400 so you know you could save a couple bucks here and there but this thing is definitely going up so they got one here a 9.6 for 810 dollars Right here it says 9.6 is 350. So yeah, you know, got a little bit of uh, maturity going on here with the prices. But am I stacking or slacking on Uncanny X-Men 130? Man, well, first of all, we got some things going on on the VB app. Right here, first appearance of Incredible Hulk. And this is dropping on Thursday. Yeah. So, with this coming out, right? On Thursday. And, you know, we just had a couple of drops. You know what I'm saying? I think gems are a little tight on the app for the people right now. I'm not sure. I'm not. So, it's 5,000. I mean,. That's a really nice, nice drop size right there. That's, that's really nice, guys. But again, I still don't. I, I think it's going to sell out of 5K. It's a first appearance. It's got a lot going for it, right? With it selling out 5K editions, I think we should be pretty close to the retail price after the drop when it comes to the common and uncommon, right? So from that standpoint, I like this drop. You know what I'm saying? 5K drops seem to do well, but it also has to be the right combination of who the character is, right? And Dazzler's not really that known. As you guys seen, she's in her X-Men movie, X-Men Academy or whatever that was, right? So could be future plans for the character. We don't know. You know, I think she has potential, but there's so many characters, right? We don't know. So... I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily be stacking on this book just because I know we got to look forward to on Thursday, man. You know what I'm saying? And my gems are, you know, a little tight right now. I'm trying my best not to sell too much, too many items on the app, and also at the same time not put too much into the app as well. So we gotta see what happens in the next couple of days, and that's why I think I'm more interested in the hope than this book. You know, if the Hulk wasn't dropping, I might, you know, be a little more interested in this book. But I think I'm going to be, I don't know, I think I might be slacking on the actual drop and do what I've been doing these last couple of comic drops and just see what's going on in the market. However, at the same time, I feel like, you know, what I like to do beforehand is kind of have a vision of how many of these and what rarities I kind of want. So when it comes to this book, like my main interest is probably drawn with that common. If that's going to be the case, 
I might actually go for a couple on the drop. I might. I don't, I'm definitely not maxing out, though. But I'm going to go for a couple on the drop just because I have a feeling in the market they're only going to be maybe a dollar under the retail, somewhere around there. Not financial advice, of course. I have no idea what's going to happen. That's what it feels like. So if that's the case, I'm, I'd rather just take my chances in possibly hitting a rare, ultra rare, the secret rare and still ending up with an uncommon or common close to retail, if that makes any sense. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You know what I'm saying? As always, let me know down below what you guys are doing. Are you stacking or slacking on Uncanny X-Men 130? That's the question, man. Let me know. But for now, your man Dr. Strange, all things strange is out.